Good evening guys, Jason here with Bounce Wave Inflatable Sales. I wanted to take a moment and show you guys another look at a uh, open trailer um, that, that would be uh, really good for the inflatable industry, uh, even if you're carrying tents and things like that. Um, this one I built, um, this is gonna be a little more heavier duty uh, for the heavier loads, you guys that have quite a few units. Um, and again, cost-wise, it's gonna get a little heavier in cost, but again, the idea being you have something that actually is going to work for the job for a long period of time, not something you got to keep changing trailers out or, you know, you're, you're, you're grossly getting overweight on a trailer or it's just not carrying the things you, you need to get to the job. You're kind of running out of the room in the bed of the truck um, and a little different way of doing it. And, and my mindset was uh, in building this one was how can I utilize um, actually some of the fender well. So, so going down the road, you know, you have a certain amount of width. Fender wells stick out about here. I think this is seven wide. You don't want to go a whole lot more than that. But what can we do, you know, in this space of fender well to help generate storage? And I'll show you a little bit more about this trailer, but if you come back here, one of the things we did was I had a guy weld baskets on it, just behind the fender well, as you can see, and weld baskets back through here. And why is we can carry a lot of stuff in here. Stakes, um, hammers, uh, anything like that. You can even, you can even lid this a little bit and get to cleaning supplies, stakes, hammers. This, this stops you from having to throw it in the back of the truck. Easy to reach in and grab and carry those things out. You can also, I haven't done it yet, but I will. I'm gonna put a little basket here, not quite as large uh, on, the, on the trailer. And if you come around here often, I'll show you guys. Um, these carriages here are for actual tents. So we can put our poles, stack them as you can see up in this, carriage area here and put our poles down through and just strap them on and that way the poles are out of the way they're not laying in the trailer we don't have issue there and again we're using the width that we're already using anyway for our fender walls and tires so now we're utilizing it to actually get space here i will add another basket here as well coming down the road you're going to see another basket there um, and as you can see in the back here you're going to see another holding basket to put anything that we need in there. So if you had, uh, you know, if you had uh, taken just tents and you needed a place to put the bigger stakes, you've got it and you're not crowding everything. The trailer's actually working for you as a whole. Again, not the cheapest thing to do, but longevity wise and, and, and the utilization of this trailer is gonna be awfully good. And this is why we, we went this route. The back gate here, as you can see, um, is reinforced and and actually I might run a couple X bars through and the reason I reinforce the back gate as you can see and this is all two inch tubing this is a pretty well built trailer um, the reason I do that is so the mesh doesn't pop through when you take heavy loads up if the gaps in the trailer are really large the mesh is gonna is gonna be compressed as you keep going up a dolly with really heavy units you can see a little bow right here in this one already so it just takes times and little welds break right there then you got metal sticking up that you got to run over and it just it gets problematic. So having it braced helps a whole lot because it's getting more stability so it doesn't cave in as well. Also adding a lip to your trailer here. Most trailers don't come with it. Well, a lot of times, depending on the ledge or the area that you're sitting on, you'll have a gap to run up on the trailer. So you have your dolly and you have this gap right here. So you gotta, you gotta go over this, this impact right here where the trailer is down that you're hitting this blunt force. If you add a flange to it up top, as you can see here, when I lay this gate down, ideally it will, uh, it will close. It will, I don't know if I got enough room to my fence back there, but I'll help you get an idea. It'll lay more flush, as you can see here. See, now this would be the normal ledge and it's it's more blunt but this this extra lip right here gives me a smooth transition to uh to run up this trailer and makes getting up it a lot easier and i don't have to bang my dolly or you know jar the wheels of the dolly or blow the wear bearings out of the wheels of the dolly getting up the trailer uh we also put tie down so we added two inch uh tubing as you can see as a top shelf rack here i also put uh, tie downs as you can see throughout so if you had to tie anything down, you can. So this is all two inch. The reason I do this, we stand our units up because laying them down and we picking them back up is tough. And you're not utilizing your room uh, that way. So if I take 
if I take, we roll about head high. Now, if I take a, a six foot unit and lay it here and one six footer, if I can fit it in over there, a six footer here, a six footer there, you're already running out of room with four units on an 18 foot trailer, which is quite crazy. So if I can stand them up with a small lean, right? Stand them up with a small lean, how many units can I get running through this trailer? You know, I can triple the amount to the guy that's laying them down. Uh, in order to do that safely and the easiest way to do it is, is add extensions, you know, so it holds in properly. And then the reason why we did two inch on this, and again, it's a little more pricier thing to do and I get that. And you also, we have trailers with, with thinner, uh, uh, thinner setup up top. What we found though, if you get too thin, if you go down dirt roads or anything like that, this, this oscillates with the dirt roads. So this upper half starts to shake a lot as the trailer's moving. And if you have units against it, that pressure is, is creating a lot of movements. And what it'll do, A, it's a lot thinner metal, so the welds are a lot thinner, and then your welds will start to crack and break. So if you go with thinner, uh, thicker two inch, and weld that up properly, you're gonna get a lot more stable. I'm not gonna make the trailer a little more heavier, don't get me wrong. But again, I'm talking about guys who have the units that wanna go out and, and have a trailer that will handle what they're trying to do, this type of setup to do it. And then you go to your slide rack here, which we put hooks in. And this is our slide rack, you just kind of pull the pins. So if we don't have quite the load, we can just slide this headache rack back. You can see where you can just plug the pins in and move this back. And I can transfer so my units would lean here. And I can, if I only had four or five, I can put it right over the axle, which is the idea thing to do. We only utilize the whole trailer if need be. But if it's only five or six units going in the trailer, just slide the rack back, put it here, lean your units up and then let them flow back. As you can see, we just tapered it off back here just for aesthetics to make it look a little better. And again, anything you're moving um, would work well. When you're looking for a trailer too, be careful that, you know, that the tongue ties all the way back. And if you can look here, you'll see a lot of your cheaper trailers, the tongue will just tie in right here and stop. Um, they're generally gonna be problematic, right? So it's something that as you grow, you're gonna to have to replace because as you add more units to that trailer, you're putting too much weight for a tongue that just ties in here on a really cheap trailer. So you wanna bring that back. This is a big text you can see, and it runs all the way back towards the axle and fendals back there. So it ties in really, really well for a, for a lot of stability um, on this particular trailer as well. I guess you can move the hitch here, and, and uh, this is a different style hitch, which I like uh, a lot where it connects. Um, but this is, what I think is a really, really good heavy duty, again, for you guys that that are growing and and you're, you're moving a mass amount of equipment, this is a great open trailer. And the reason I like opens, the downside is rain, maybe getting dry units wet. But for me, outside of that, um, and I guess an enclosed, which I have a 20 foot enclosed as well, I guess an enclosed is good for, you know, if you're leaving units in it overnight, maybe for theft reasons, you, those odds go down a little bit. But I don't have to worry about height you know, as much. Again, we roll a little bit tall, so I don't have to worry about squeezing that in or, or knocking the wood out of the inside of a trailer with, a, with a, a dolly, especially if you have guys that are working with you, things like that. The open's just kind of uh, a little lighter than the enclosed, so it's gonna use less fuel. Um, I can see behind it easy when I'm driving and, you know, just loading it and unloading it's relatively easy. It's just a simplified way of doing things. And uh, so I'm, I'm more preferable on this side in, in the inflatable industry carrying with, with these types of setups. Again, if you're just starting or have five or six units or maybe even 10, you, you don't have to get insane. But but what you'll learn is if you're gonna be in a business a while and, and you're gonna grow the business, um, you end up going, dang, I wish I would've went ahead and spent the extra thousand dollars and got the heavier duty trailer. I, I, it's just the way, the way it goes and it sucks to buy it up front and do that but you're gonna have longevity. And even if you're only in the business two years and you went to resell the trailer, you'll get majority of that back because you're selling a better trailer, a heavy duty trailer, not just a little trailer that's a homeowner's use that, you know, or used to put a little lawnmower in or, you know, something like that. This is gonna be more built to handle the industry of what we're trying to do. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you with, with your decision-making process or if you step away again, Austin, and you know, this is just kind of the way we did it. Again, everybody's a little bit different. Slide rack up top. And then as you can see, I don't know what the exact measurement is here, but almost probably four foot. So if you have a six foot unit, it's gonna stick up a little bit, but still it's it's compressed in there pretty well. Nothing's gonna fall out. And uh, it has the, the mesh here. Um, if you had to put blowers or something up front, 
whatever it might be, help keep that in a little bit. But this is the ideal trailer for this industry. 888-901-WAVE if you have any questions. Um, you can visit our website or call 888-901-WAVE. We're happy to answer anything you have as far as the inflatable industry, growing the inflatable industry, tools used for it, uh, you know, from electric dollies to manual dollies to, to trailers, water bags, how to's, what ifs, we kind of understand the full circle of this gig. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it was helpful. 888-901-WAVE if you have any questions.